Hello and welcome to this video. My name's Barry Beckham. If you're a Pictures to Exe user and you like to include animation into your presentations, then at some stage you're going to need to understand variable speed modifiers, what they do and when we're likely to use them. The animation speed modifiers can be found in the Objects and Animations screen via Add Modifier animation speed and there we can see that we have accelerate slow down and smooth as our options if we're going to ask the question of why do we need animation speed modifiers and when we're likely to use them I think we need to start first by understanding what the default linear speed is and how that impacts our animation this default linear speed in Pictures to Exe means that our animation runs at exactly the same speed from the moment the image or object starts moving to the moment it stops. Now I think we can show this in a visual way with a short demonstration. I'd like to draw your attention to the cyclist at the top left of the screen, the one on the linear track. He's going to cycle from left to right using the default linear speed. The important thing I'd like to draw to your attention to here is that our image, object or text, but in our case it's a bicycle, is on screen for the entire animation from the start to the stop. Because we can see our cycle all the way through the animation, both the start and stop will show an unsightly jolt and that's because the linear speed is the same speed all the way through the animation. It's not very natural is it? If we were really watching a cyclist cycle from point A to point B he would start off slow, build up speed through most of the journey but then slow down to a stop at the end. This abrupt start and stop is the very reason why we need variable speed and we have the perfect speed option that's going to be right for our cyclist and it's actually called smooth so let's take a look at the cyclist at the bottom left our speed modifier smooth has been applied to the keyframe that begins the animation let's watch the difference here as the cyclist starts off slow builds up speed that comes to a gentle stop at the end. So after watching this demonstration we have one of our answers to when we may use the smooth speed option. Any time our animated image, object or text because it could be any one of those, any time they're on screen as the animation starts and they are still on screen when it ends. So for our cyclist, smooth is just the right speed to match the movement. The next speed option we have is accelerate. And here our cyclist will start off nice and gentle, but he does have to travel the same distance as the other cyclists. So when he reaches the right hand side, he's moving even faster and comes to a crashing stop. So the accelerate speed option would be a good choice for images, objects or text that start their animation on screen but where the animation takes them off screen or maybe the end of the animation is hidden from us within a transition style like dissolve. So in this scenario the start of the animation is gentle and we don't see the abrupt end of the animation anyway. Let's complete the four speeds by looking at slow down. This is the opposite to accelerate of course and it would be a great choice for any image, object or text that starts their animation off screen or may be hidden in a faded transition but the animation ends on screen. As we can see it ends very very gently. Let's take a look next at a more practical animation example where we're going to create a gentle zoom of a full screen image over about 15 seconds. In this case the default linear speed is all we need. 
That abrupt start and stop to our animation is still going to be there, but we just won't see it because the start and end of our zoom is hidden within that fade transition. Let me show the same animation once again, but this time I'm going to move the end of the zoom to a position just prior to the fade out. And when I do that, then we can see that abrupt stop again. So the default linear speed is fine as long as the animation start and end is hidden. Let's look at an example where we're using text, where the speed option we're most likely to choose is slow down. In our first example, the start of the animation being off screen isn't important because we can't see it anyway. The important part is how the text animation comes to a stop, so our slow down speed is perfect for this. Another scenario where the same speed option is perfect is when the start of our animation is hidden. Now I've mentioned that the animation could be hidden in a transition, but here as my text drops out of the clouds we get exactly the same effect. The slowdown works perfectly. But if I wanted my text to move off screen after it was read, then slowdown and linear are not appropriate. Smooth would work, but probably accelerate would be better. What we also have to remember with animation speed is that generally speaking it needs to be applied to all types of animation. For example, I may have an object, text or an image panned left to right, but at the same time I may be rotating it and maybe even zooming it as well. Three different animation techniques. Now the most appropriate animation speed given my image remains on screen all of the time is smooth. But let's look at an example with just the default linear speed first. What we see is that same abrupt start and stop but we see it on the pan, the zoom and also the rotate. Let me run the same animation again but this time I'll add the smooth animation speed but I'll just add it to the pan. I'll leave it off the rotate and also the zoom. Now it does look a little bit better but it's still not quite right. It's not until I add the smooth animation speed to the pan, zoom and the rotate that it looks at its best. When we start to consider more advanced animation then we may have to consider a speed option like slow down for one part of the movement, maybe smooth for another part, with even an accelerate to finish. We're going to take a look at that in a moment or two but let's return to our cyclists one more time just for fun. Let's set them all off together and see how linear, accelerate, slow down and smooth all look in the form of a race. Remember they all have the same distance to travel and the same time to do it. So although it may not look like it at the start, they're all going to finish neck and neck. So let's take a brief recap here. Let's say that linear speed is OK when the start and the end of the animation cannot be seen, when it's hidden off screen or in a transition. Accelerate is probably the better option when the animated object starts its movement on screen but the end is either hidden in a fade or the object leaves the screen. Slow down is going to be a good choice when our animated object starts the movement hidden or off screen. Here it's the gentle stop that's the most important. Finally we have the smooth speed option probably best used where the start and finish of an animated image, object or text is on screen for the entire time. 
Image presentation via pictures to XE is a wide topic where we can make many creative variations to animation speed. In a presentation I'm going to show next we'll bring the image into view from off screen but we'll allow it a small amount of movement while it's on screen not enough to detract from the main object of the exercise of course which is to display the image. Then we allow it to drift off screen and the idea is that it will be replaced by the next image in the show. So we use the slow down option as the image drops into place. We use smooth as the image is gently moved from one side of the screen to the other and accelerate is required to remove the image from the screen ready for the next. Thanks for watching and I hope this video helps your understanding of animation speed just a little bit better. If you've watched this far, I think it's fair for me to assume you're already a pictures to xe user, but if not, I do have the software available on my website, including a trial version, and it's pretty good software too. I also have many more sets of videos on pictures to xe under the titles of Getting Started, animation, slide styles, custom transitions, adding video, sound editing and other topics too. And hello if you're a YouTube viewer. If you like this video why not try another one. If you're a photographer who has more images stored on your computer than you know what to do with, as many of us do, then take a look at one or two of my audio visual presentations. If you can find a better way to present your images than digital audio visual, I'd like to see what you find because in over 40 years I've not found better than this. It's a great way to show off your photography and I'll place all the links you need below.